Good morning everybody, this is Diane. As you can see, I have Holly Hobby journals on my table. This is what I've been working on. Um, I spent the day yesterday um, working on the pages of this book. And this morning I've been prepping pages for this one. And so we're going to go through these pages and um, do the gluing and whatnot, stamping. So you can see what kind of elements I'm including in the books. Um, the little spiral bound or um, o-ring bound notebook is completed and I will do a flip through before I put it in the shop. I'm going to wait till all the Holly Hobby journals are done and put them all in the shop together and I did complete the cover. Well at least I have the basis for the cover, the foundation done. I don't, I'll probably put something on the inside pockets or something but this is what it looks like. I found this eyelet with the um, thread for you to thread a ribbon through and it was a little painstaking but I got it through there and isn't that pretty? And I cut this out of one of the books and backed it with blue cardstock and glued it on. So obviously I have my pages but I haven't, I haven't even put them together into a signature. This will just be a one signature journal. So let's just get going into this book. So this is the Mod Podge cover. Uh, you saw me apply the wrapping paper with the Mod Podge and I, I did cut out a frame. So I have these thinlet uh, nesting dies. I have a variety of shapes and of course they come in many sizes because they're nesting dies. So in order to get this to be a frame and not just a solid shape. I just put the nesting one, the next down, next size down inside it and uh, put them through the big shot and it came out with that shape. And then I took a background stamp with a wood grain and stamped it to give it a little bit of texture. Added this little embellishment that I had made in a previous video, a stash of Street or Somerset and stuff fired video. I had some of those and um, I added some book corners just so that the thin gift wrap doesn't wear off the corners. I need to do something to the inside cover but for now we're going to focus on the pages. One signature at a time. I've already added the trim on the front of each signature and I've added flips and a cluster, a flip and a cluster in each signature. Other than that, I just have prepped things so that you don't have to wait for me to um, get things ready. So for the front of each signature, I have cut an image from one of the books, backed it with cardstock, and I will just put it on as a tuck spot and then add a tag. This is a tag that I made in a previous video with a great big bow and it it does create bulk in the journal but I really like it. See I put it in, I put one in this book too even though it's a small book. I just thought it was so pretty so I left it in there and if you don't like it if you purchase the journal you can untie that and take it out and put something else in. So how's everybody doing today? We have mild weather today. We're in the mid to upper 30s this week and so pretty much, I won't say all of it, but a lot of our snow, that we that huge storm we had, it wasn't really a storm, it was just huge snowfall. Um, that's almost gone. I think all that's left is where it was plowed into piles. So that's going to take a little longer to melt. And on the back of this page, I'm going to um, put this little flip pocket. I didn't get a piece of lace out for that. I thought I did. I'm going to put a little piece of lace across there. So I guess I'm not totally prepared. I wonder if 
this green one would be okay because this is green. Yeah, I think we'll go with that. So I just took one of the cutoff pieces. Actually, I didn't I didn't actually use this piece in a journal, so I just cut a four inch strip. Some of these in the first journal they were made with cutoff pieces. And then I just eyeballed it, folded it up, and then folded it down so that the flap covers with a little bit of um, overlap. And then there, that makes a little trifold that you can journal on. And I will glue it on so that there is also a tuck spot available. And I have a bunch of labels and journaling spots that I had stamped onto coffee dyed paper or this is one of the kind of tissuey craft papers that I have and I already had them stamped and cut out and in my stash so I've been using a lot of them there there is a variety I have so many label type stamps and journaling st stamps <coughs> sorry And I'll just put this little card down here for journaling. Could add a little piece of doily for embellishment. That was an afterthought just because I saw that little scrap of doily lying there. And I will glue this to the on the top, the side that's closest to the fold of the signature, and the bottom, and then this will be a tuck spot on that side. And I did it on the wrong side. I have a bunch of seed, vintage seed catalog images, or seed, yeah, I guess they're seed catalog images, or advertising. I'm, anyway, they're, they're digitals, and I have way too many of them printed. I did, I did a huge batch of them by mistake when I first got them, and I'm still trying to use them. So, that's what I'm using to put in the tuck spots of these pockets. Oops. Little glue where the glue stick was on that paper. This one was printed on cardstock, so I'm just going to ink it. And some of them were printed on paper, so I um, sewed them to coffee dyed paper. I'm 
going to take a little piece of fabric and make a tab so that when it's tucked into the pocket you can easily pull it out. But I will not leave it in there because that glue is still wet. So I'll just tuck it in there for now. I've already glued one of the stamped journaling spots on the wrapping paper. For this page, I'm going to just stamp a little image. <coughs> I have this little flower image. It looks sweet and country-ish. It's an old Stampin' Up! stamp, and it's called... Nope, it's not. JRL Design, and it's called Garden Vine. Don't know where I got it. Probably Hobby Lobby or Michael's. I've had it for a long time. And then, just for some fun and some interest, I'm going to punch that edge. Probably shouldn't try to do this on camera because I really have to get my face close so I can line, line it up, but we're going to give it a shot. I can do this one better than the one I did in the other journal. That one was, I bought that at a at the flea market last year, the one I used in the first journal. And it was $5, and it's really pretty, but it was a little, once I got the hang of it, I did okay with it. But at first I thought, man, why did I start using this punch? But I do like it. This one is easy. I, I've used this one plenty of times. That just makes a pretty a pretty edge. this away I'm going to stamp some corner stamps. I've got a bunch of different corner stamps. A lot of them are stamping up and they came in a set of four or something and I have a couple sets so I've got them pulled out here and I've used some of them. But for this one I'm going to use this from Stampington and Company. Did that with my distressing. So that one's a little darker than that one. Okay, no problem. So there's the flip that I added for this signature. This is a piece of stationery that someone sent me. It looks It's this huge bonnet with this little girl down here and some flowers. And I thought that was appropriate for this. I do have some Holly Hobby stationery, but I didn't have enough to put one in every signature. So I pulled those out. This is an embellishment that I made in a previous um, video. And it's I have a die cut to cut this jar and this, I think the label comes with it, and maybe the stamp. So I made this and um, covered it with fabric. I used the dye on the fabric also. So this is just going to be a little tuck spot right there. The other journal doesn't have these jars because it has a different type of pocket, but the shape of the book is different and it's much wider than this book and I had to fold the page in so I wouldn't have to cut off any of the picture so they have different types of pockets but I, look, I really like the way that looks and I'm glad I'm getting to use some of the items that I made previously. Here's another tea dyed paper so I'm going to 
do a set of corners on this. I think I'll use this one. This is from 1998. Trying to see what I want to do on the Okay, on this side I have a stamping tin plaid checker border, it says, and I believe this was in the same collection as this, or it's the same artist anyway. there so I don't stamp on my table like I did yesterday. Line that up pretty good. I had to stand up so I could put my head over where I was stamping to line it up without getting my head in the camera. I put a uh, look there. I have to put an envelope here. My envelope is missing but I'll find one. To put there. They're not a flip, it's a fabric cluster. Um, so I made a bunch of these. I cut this, this shape out, which matches the frame on one of the journals, and um, I just cut them out in a variety of colors that match the books, and then I stitched on one of my Holly Hobby playing cards. So I put that on as a tuck spot. Once I have all the journals put together with all their pockets and tuck spots, I will go through and fill the tuck spots and see what else I can add because I have other stuff floating around here that needs to go in if I can. I'm not going to overstuff, but <clears throat> this is uh, an embellishment that I made that was Stampington inspired and it's also a scrapistry. And um, I had a few of these made and I thought they were country looking, so I added them. And it's got a narrow pocket here so I can add a long tag which I'll probably have to make because I don't have any like that. For this piece of wrapping paper I had this corner, it's like a little bookmark, you're supposed to be able to take it off and move it, but um, this was from a 1930s children's activity book and it was that uh, pulpy kind of a paper, very brittle. So I made a copy of some of them. I hope I still have these pieces so I can make more copies, but um, it's just a corner and I glued it down on this side and decorated that with um, another embellishment that I had made. This is a real uh, milk bottle cap and then this will be a little tuck spot there. And here I'm just going to add a journaling card on a piece of wood grained printed paper and that will be there. I glue the right side this time. So there are lots of pockets and tuck spots in this journal.
Okay, next signature. <coughs> Sorry. This is the piece that I cut out. I love this little boy and his cat. <coughs> he kind of reminds me of a of my grandson Adam. He, Adam has a small, delicate-looking face, even though he's 14 now and he's starting to look more man, manly. But this reminds me of a younger Adam, and Adam has a black cat. I'll glue him on this side. And here's another stamped label that I can glue on this page. Oops. You can write dates or just little notes on these labels or a quote, scripture verse. Let's do the rest of it while we're here. Okay, this time I did get the lace out and I sewed the card to coffee dyed paper and added the tab on this one. So I'm going to glue the lace here. This is the little printable card. It's got a little um, patch of flowers there and then some lines for journaling. I don't know where I got the card. I've had it in my stash for a long time. So in, in addition to the Holly Hobby ephemera that I had, I just went through my stash of journal cards and embellishments and used a lot of what I already have and my handmade things. I pulled out what I could of those. to the page. I really press it down when I'm especially when I'm gluing on coffee dyed paper, and especially when I'm gluing coffee dyed paper to coffee dyed paper, because they are crinkly and they have they're warped. And I did iron these pages too, so they wouldn't be quite so fluffy. And then this will go in the inside there when it's dry. I already did this one because I wanted to sew, so I just took a piece of scrapbook paper, leftover paper, and sewed on some lace and then added, that's a Tim Holtz card, and then I, I tucked this card in the pocket. Every journal is going to get at least one of those postcards because I had quite a few of them. And I glued a label onto this page, the wrapping paper page. 
We're going to do some more stamping on this page. With the same stamp. And I'll do some corners. I have this looks like wood. Turn my light off for a minute. There's a glare on this. Does that make it more yellow? But it's too dark. So I think when I switch my camera from photo to um, video, the lens, uh, the picture in my viewfinder automatically gets more yellow. I don't know why switching it to movie would do that, but maybe if I look for a white bulb for this light over my head, that might help. I have had a complaint about the yellowness of my videos. Is this what I want? Is this where I was? Yes, that's where I was. I just have to remember where this page goes goes right here. Then here's a little um, note card and I just covered up the get well message with a journaling card and I created this little pocket. Um, I did sewing on this too so I already did it and it's a piece of scrap of scrapbook paper and fabric and um, the end of a Holly Hobby um, color form box that I received from Pam. I remembered, I didn't remember, she messaged, she commented, she's the one that sent me these fabrics and some of the other items. So I've gotten items from Pam and um, Jeannie. And this was the box, the color form box, and I've glued this, cut this image out, peeled off some of the layers of cardboard and glued her to this and I'm hoping, I think she's a little tall, so I'm going to just have to clip her to a page. This is the only journal she would fit in because she's too tall for the other ones. So I could trim off a little on the bottom and maybe she could fit in a pocket. But she's really cute. And this is an image waiting to be cut out and put into the fabric book. Here is the fabric flip here. The piece of stationery that has Holly Hobby on it. And I already glued this jar on. I guess I forgot I was just prepping and, and I went ahead and glued some of the things. That's okay. Saves us some time, right? It's not like you don't know how to glue stuff. Just going to do some stamping here. Do this plaid one. And 
this one is kind of a looks like a woven texture with a border, a little checkered border. Stampin' Up! first started way back when they had a lot of country themed stamps, lots of country characters and things like this. But that was in vogue back then. envelope. I can decorate the envelope, but I don't have, I don't know what I'm going to decorate it with at the moment. That will happen when I have all the journals put together and I see what's left. I have a cluster here and I glued a little yo-yo um, to that. And there's, again, I went ahead and glued that on with a playing card. And I glued this one on. Goodness, I just went right ahead and did all this stuff. So this is just a little tuck spot with one of the labels that I had cut out with that, um, I guess they call it a top note shape. So that, you, that part of that is hidden behind this um, cut out uh, die cut heart that's made out of handmade paper. Someone sent that to me. So that's just a little tuck spot. And that'll probably have something like a playing card or something small in there. And I already glued this on too. Oh, we did that in the video. And here's the card. So I just have one more signature to do, and you don't have to watch me do that one. Ugh, the glue took up space. So I'm going to have to cut some of this off and re-sew it. Or put something else in the pocket. Or, let me see if I can make a little more room in here. That did the trick. There we go. Let me just show you the image that's going to be on the front of the signature of... I'll find a piece of ephemera to tuck in here. So this is the little girl that's going to go on this page doing dishes, got her hands full, and I love the detail of the little um, orange marmalade cat there drinking out of his dish. And I'll put this little label up there. Um, well, I can keep working because I've got, I've got a little more time on the video, but if you want to stick around, you can stick around. I also, last night, started working on the large amount of broken jewelry pieces and buttons that I got at the flea market last summer, this past summer. Um, I had, I just got one big bag of broken jewelry pieces and they've just been sitting in a box. There's a label on this, waiting for me to get to them. So last night, I went through the box, which took quite a while. I was watching TV while I did it, and threw away probably more than half. I knew that I wouldn't be keeping most of it, but it was a good enough price that I, and it had some really interesting pieces in it. So I saved out the good pieces, or the pieces that I thought Somebody would want to make something with that. Somebody could do something with that, and I would toss it in the keep pile. And then I soaked them with some in a basin of water with some dish soap to kind of clean the grime off them, rinsed them off, 
and now they're all spread out on an old towel <laughs> drying and I did the same thing with the buttons although I didn't sort them I just I'm keeping using all the buttons I'm not keeping them I'm putting them in my shop I have enough buttons I kept very few of the jewelry pieces so they're all drying and hopefully by tomorrow they'll be dry enough they might be dry enough now but I just want to make sure I'm not putting them in plastic bags while they're wet or damp at all so then I will bag them up and hopefully they'll be in the shop pretty soon along with a couple of other items that I need to get into the shop. I'm still plugging away at my, my uh, office is looking better with fewer things. So there's another one I haven't used. There's a, a plaid with a little button on it. Um, it's looking much neater in my office because all of the stuff I'm going to sell is contained in the two areas or receptacles that I want them to be in. So that's nice. And probably about the time I get them all in the shop, and or at least in the shop, I don't know about sold, but at least in the shop, it'll be time to start hunting again, which will be fun. I look forward to the hunt. Camping again already. Uh, where did that? Oh, that's in the middle. Okay. Well, I'm going to go back to. I've used up all the corners, so I'm going to do this one again. All the corners that I got out. I have other corners that I didn't pull out, but these are the ones that. I thought went better, went the best with this style of journal. There's a fabric cluster. There's one of those country style pockets that I made. Oh, I didn't talk about the lace pattern that's on these coffee dyed papers, some of them. I had I had found at a flea market some plastic, round plastic doilies, and there were only oh I don't remember if it was two or just one. But there were a couple, and one was smaller. Anyway, you're limited. You can't can't um, speed dry them in the oven because they're plastic. So I'm, I was very limited to how many of the lace papers I could make. So I went to Amazon and ordered. I looked for plastic doily tablecloths or placemats, and I found a set. I can't remember how many are in the set, but more than I need and they're blue, <laughs> and they're rectangular placemats, and very lacy all over. So I just, when I did cop, um, pages this week, I left, I did some in the oven, and then I left my counter, the space that I had available on my counter, because I don't have very big counters, but I just put the placemats on top of them and let them dry overnight. It just meant that I couldn't wash my dishes that night. Oh well. <laughs> I had to wash them the next day though. I put a little label on that, the back of the card. And here's a little pocket I want to add to this page. So it's just a scrap of the scrapbook paper. I'm going to hide that piece of the doily printed paper. And I put a piece of a coffee dyed doily on it and 
going to add that little journaling spot. I believe these little cards that I'm using came from Country at Heart Digital. Um, Country at Heart on Etsy, but I'm not positive. But I'm pretty sure that's where they came from. And I'll just glue that on there as a tuck spot. one more of the flips. Um, I used a piece of that Holly Hobby doll dress and this was at the top where there was a button and I kept that on there. So I just folded folded it up from the bottom so it's not it's not folded over this way like I usually do um, but because I, I wanted to keep the, the button off the paper. Anyway I glued that together because the button was in the way for sewing but I was able to sew it on there and I already sewed on some eyelet it's coffee dyed eyelet and a little bit of sheer ribbon so now I will just add these elements these pieces that I've been using I didn't mention these they are die cuts they're cut and embossed pieces that I got. Um, I bought them for myself and I talked about them in a different video. But and this was not from that set but it was it's also cut and embossed. So anyway I cut out a bunch of them back then when I talked about them which was you know back in December or November. So I'm using some that I already had cut out. I'm going to have to do some more in different colors because I just love them. I think I like them mostly in the neutral color like off-white but I might have a few in some different colors too in my stash. I mean I'll, I might put some in my stash. So that's what I had prepped for today. I got all of that stuff done. So I think the next thing to do would be to do the pages for the cloth book and then see what is left over and go back through and add what I can add or what I want to add to the books, including all of the tags and cards into the tuck pockets and tuck spots. So they're coming along very nicely. I'm very pleased with them. Um, I would like to keep one of these, but I won't. If I was going to keep one, I would probably keep this one. But I love them all. Alright, so that's it for today. Um, I will see you in the next video. I don't know what kind of progress will have been made by then. Um, but thank you for watching. Where's my cover? Here's my cover. And I hope that you have a creative day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.